We have two counting problems this month and three counting strategies. We're going to start right here. We have 25 cells in a 5 by 5 grid of squares. Each one is filled with a 0, 1, or 2 in such a way that the numbers written in neighboring cells differ from the number in that cell by 1. I'm not really sure what that means, but two cells are considered neighbors if they share a side. We want to count how many different ways we can fill up these 5 by 5 grids. I'm going to take a strategy here I call constructive counting. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to make one of these things that we're trying to count, and then hopefully that'll help me understand the problem, and it might even help me solve it. So we start off by going ahead and drawing 5 by 5 grid of squares, and then we're going to try to fill it up with zeros, ones, and twos in a way that satisfies the conditions given in the problem. I'll just start here in the upper left. I'll throw a zero in here. And what can be next to the zero has to differ from the number in that cell, differ from the zero by one. That means our only options in these two cells are the one. We can only put a one in each of these. Now let's go one more diagonal out to these cells that neighbor the one. Well, they have to differ from the one by one. So each of these cells has to be a zero or a two. Can't be a one because it has to be one away from a one. But I do have two choices for each of these cells. Each one could be a 0 or a 2. Let me step out another diagonal here, and we look at the, num the cells that neighbor these zeros or these 2s. Now, it doesn't matter if I have a 0 or a 2 here. My only option down here for the neighbor is 1, because that'll be the only number that's 1 away from either a 0 or a 2. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. Now we see the pattern emerging. Next to each one of these 1s, I have to put a 0 or a 2, a 0 or a 2, the same thing all the way across, because in each case, the 0 and 2 are the only numbers that are 1 away from these 1s that they neighbor. And the next diagonal out, of course, the only option again I have is 1. Next diagonal again is 0s or 2s. 0s or 2s. And now we see what happens if we start with a 0 in that upper left-hand corner. We're going to fill out the grid like this. We're going to have 1s on these diagonals. Then on each of the other diagonals, we have to put a 0 or a 2 in each cell. Now, the same thing is going to happen if I start up with a 2 up here, because then these two will have to be 1s, and we'll end up with the same diagonal pattern. So now we can count the number of ways we can build this. Now, these diagonals, the one, diagonals with the 1s, we know exactly what they'll be. Along these other diagonals, for each of these cells, we have two choices. We have to count up how many cells we have here. We have 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5 is 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So I have 13 cells where I have two choices. I have two choices 13 times, that means I have two to the 13th ways to build a grid like this. So this takes care of all the grids where I start with a 0 or 2 in the upper left hand corner, but what happens if we start with a 1? Well, we'll do the same thing there. We'll go ahead and try to build one and see what happens. And I suspect you have an inkling of what this is going to look like. We start off with the one up here. Well, now this diagonal, just like we were working out over here, this has to be a zero or a two. This has to be a zero or a two. These are ones. Each of these is a zero or a two. And then we have ones again. More zeros or twos. And we end up with the same diagonal pattern that we had in this case over here. But now this time we have a different number of cells where we have these options of 0 or 2. We have 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 2 is 12. I have 12 cells now where I have two choices each. I have two choices 12 times. That gives me 2 to the 12th total number of ways that we can build out the grid when we start with a 1 in the upper left-hand corner. And this covers all the possible cases because I have to start with either a 0, a 1, or a 2 in that upper left-hand corner. So our total number of ways to build out these grids is 2 to the 12th plus 2 to the 13th. Oh boy, now i got to add these pretty large numbers. Now fortunately, I happen to know what 2 to the 10th is because that's what kind of guy I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out 2 to the 10th from this sum. I'm going to have 2 to the 10th times the sum, 2 squared, plus 2 cubed. 2 to the 10th is 1,024. It's also a nice number because it's very close to 1,000. It makes it easy to multiply by. And we're going to multiply that by 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, add those together, you get 12. And this is an easy product to compute because 12 times 1,000 gives us 12,000. 
And then 12 times 24, well, 24 is 2 times 12, so we have 2 times 12 times 12. 12 times 12 is 144, we know our squares. Then we double 144, we get 288. So we have 12,288 ways to build out these grids. Once again, constructive counting. We think about how to make one of these grids, and it told us how to count all of them. I promised you two problems, so here's another problem, and I promised you three strategies. So we're going to tackle this problem in two different ways. Yikes, first we have to read it. All right, doctor gives Amber 10 vitamins. Instructions to take one or two each day until she runs out of vitamins. So she could take a vitamin a day for 10 days, or she could take two on the first day and then one on each of the next eight days. Or she could take a vitamin each day for eight days and then take the last two on the last day. So including all of these examples, how many ways could she take all the pills? Uh, all right, strategy one. Strategy one is we're going to try to get organized, and we're just going to try to list out all the ways she could do it. This is nice, organized casework, and the key when doing casework is to stay organized so that you count everything once and only once. Now, the first case we're going to look at is the easiest, because we like starting with easy things, and that's she takes two every single day. She goes two, 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 two. That gives her the ten pills, and clearly there's only one way she can do that. So that's one way she could go, but what if she instead goes with two pills only four times? And then the other day she takes one each. Well now, this isn't the only way she could pull that off, the four twos and two ones. She could go one first and then four twos and then a one at the end, or she could do both twos, both ones at the end, or so on. So we have to count the number of ways we can arrange two ones and four twos. Now, maybe you've seen problems like this before, the whole how many words can you form with the letters in the word Mississippi. This is basically the same problem. We're going to count the number of ways we can reorder these. Well, we start with six factorial, because we have six objects here that we're trying to order. So we'll start with six factorial. But the problem with that is we're going to count some of the orders more than one. We're going to count all the orders more than once. Because when we do that six factorial, we're going to get this nice arrangement, and we're going to get the same thing with the ones switched. And then we're going to get, you know, the one, two, 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 one arrangement. We'll get it like that, and then we'll get the same thing with the ones switched. You know, for whatever order we come up with here, we can just swap the ones and get something that's the same. So we'll count every single order twice, once for each ordering of the ones. So we have to divide by two factorial to account for that. And the same thing goes for the twos. I can reorder the twos here in four factorial ways, because there's four of them. But whenever I reorder the twos here, I still just get this same ordering, one, one, and then four twos. Now there are four factorial ways to order the twos. So there are four factorial different ways. I can produce the same thing just by reordering the twos. Well, I don't want to count it four factorial times. I only want to count it once, so I have to divide out by the four factorial. Now this sort of thing happens so much in math that we have a special notation for it. We write it like this. We call it six choose two. It's got a fancy name and everything. We call it binomial coefficients. But it's just basically the same thing as the whole counting the number of ways you can rearrange the letters in Mississippi problem. So now we're going to compute this. The four factorial is going to cancel with the last four terms of six factorial. And we're going to be left with six times five divided by the two factorial. That's going to give us 30 divided by two. And that is 15. So now you know what our next case is. We started off with five twos, then four twos. We're going to talk three twos. Three twos, that's six pills. That leaves us four ones. And I've got the same problem here. We've got to count how many ways to rearrange this. Well, now we've got seven numbers, so we start at seven factorial. And we're going to divide by four factorial for the ones and three factorial for the twos. And we could look at that as seven choose four. Or we could look at it as 7 choose 3. Think about why those two are the same. And then when we compute this, well, again, the 4 factorial is going to cancel out with the last four terms of 7 factorial, and we're going to be left with 7 times 6 times 5 divided by 3 factorial. And that gives us 35. All right, three cases down. Just a few more to go. We have two two-pill days and six one pill days. Now let's count that up. Now this time we have eight 
factorial that we start with, then we divide by 6 factorial for the 1s, we divide by 2 factorial for the 2s, and you might write that as 8 choose 6, and let's see what that equals. The 6 factorial is going to cancel off with the last 6 terms in 8 factorial, and you're going to be left with 8 times 7 divided by 2, and that gives us 28. And finally, let's see, we got a 2 pill day and then 8 1 pill days. That's 9 days, 1, 2, 8 1s. I don't even have to set it up like this to count these because I just have 9 slots where we can put the 2. So there's 9 ways to do this. And then finally, the last one, which is another easy case, is we just take 1 pill a day for 10 days. And there's only one way to do that. We can see that our cases here are very organized. Five twos, then four, then three, then two, then one, then zero. So we know we've counted every single possibility. We've counted every single possibility once and only once because there are no overlaps here. Now I just have to add these up. The 15 and the 35, that gives me 50. The 9 and the 1 gives me another 10, that's 60. And then I add on the 29 from these two, we have a total of 89. So I have the answer, but I'm going to go for the gold standard in counting problems. And that's doing the same problem two different ways. My second way to go after this problem is to make it a simpler problem. What makes this problem really hard is 10 pills is a lot of pills. I mean, trying to take 10 pills, it's a lot of pills. So we're going to come up with an easier problem, a slightly easier problem here. We're going to go for one pill. All right, one pill, one pill. Well, there's just one way she can tackle one pill is just take the one pill on the first day and she's finished. All right, so now we're going to Make it a little bit harder. We're going to go with two pills. Now, two pills, she could go one and then one, or she could just take two pills on the first day. So there's two ways she can handle two pills. All right, let's try three. Now, for three, she can go one, one, one. That's one way. Or she can go two and then one, or one and then two. So didn't do such a good job keeping track, but that's three. So let's try four pills. Now, you saw what trouble I had keeping track of my count when there were only three. So for four pills, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to stay organized. I'm actually going to write them down because I don't want to lose track. Now for four, again, I want to stay organized when I list them. She can go two, two, and then she can go two, one, one, and then we have all the orders that she can do that. So there's one, two, one, and one, one, two, and then there's one each day. Right, so there's five possibilities for four pills. Let's try five pills. What are we going to get there? Again, we're going to try to be nice and organized when we count them. Well, five pills, she could go, well, she can't go two every single day, but she could go two, two, one. She could go two, one, two. We have all the orders of this. One, two, two. Well, then she could have a, just one day where she has two pills, and then the rest are ones, and then we can reorder these. All right, one, 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 two. And then she, of course, has the option of just taking one a day for five days. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ways she's doing this. Now, maybe you recognize these numbers, and you kind of have a hint as to what's coming next. We're going to try it with six. We're going to see what happens if we're taking six pills. And, of course, we can start off with three twos. And again, nice and organized. We're going to just list them all out. It could be two twos and two ones. Now we have to list all of these in a nice organized way. And you can see the pattern I'm using here to list all these out. We just list out all the possibilities. Let's see what's going on here. And then there's just one two. And then there's all the ways to do that. And then finally, she has just take a bunch of ones. Add them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Bet you saw that coming. You might recognize these numbers. These are Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci numbers, you start off with a 0 and a 1. You add those, you get a 1. You add the 1 and the 1, you get a 2. You add the 1 and the 2, you get a 3. You add the 2 and the 3, you get a 5. You add the 3 and the 5, you get an 8. You add the 5 and the 8, you get a 13. What's going on here? This looks like magic, right? We have a special word for this magic in counting. We call this recursion. We relate each case to cases before it. 
So the number of ways she does six pills, she, she can take six pills is the number of ways she can take four plus the number of ways she can take five. Now you shouldn't take my word for this. You should be thinking, huh? How does that work? Let's see if we can figure it out. What we're going to look for here is a way to create all of these, all the cases here with six, starting from the cases with four and with five. And we're going to try to map these. We're going to try to say, okay, for every one of these, there's one of those. And for every one of those, there's one of these. We call this a one-to-one -one correspondence. And we have five of these things over here that have these cases with four pills. We're going to look for something that there's five of over here. And we see one, two, three, four, five. There are five cases over here that start with the two. Well, how can we take these five cases and map them to these five cases? Well, look what happens if we take away that two that's at front. We get two, 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 one, 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 two, one, 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 two, one, 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 one. These five cases over here with six pills that start with two are just the five cases for four pills with a two tacked on to the front. So what about these other cases? What are these? Well, they all start with ones. You take one away from six, you get five. Each of these cases over here that starts with one is just one of our cases for five pills with a one tacked on to the front. And this is why we take the number of ways to do four pills plus the number of ways to do five pills, we get the number of ways to do six pills. And we do the same thing to go one more step. The number of ways to do five pills plus the number of ways to do six pills gives us the number of ways to do seven pills. And then we just keep pounding out the pattern until we get to 10. 8 and 13 is 21. 13 and 21 is 34. 21 and 34 is 55. 34, 55, 89, same answer as the last time we did this. It's the gold standard. We did it two completely different ways, and we got the same answer. So you should be very confident that this answer is correct. And you should be a little bit curious. I hope you're a little bit curious. You look at this fancy, we did this with the Fibonacci numbers problem here, and then you look at this other way we did the problem. We did this thing with these binomial coefficients. Well, shouldn't this give us some relationship between these binomial coefficients and the Fibonacci numbers? I'm going to leave that for you to figure out.